a gentle introduction to south indian carnatic music classical music part 2 of 4 by ramesh mahadevan read to you by shiv kumar kalyan raman and illustrations by hari har on the piano and shiv kumar let's make a tune the concept of a scale we have learned about the keyboard labeled the various keys under the eastern and western schemes and even quarreled about whether it should be it should have 12 keys or 22 in an octave we now know that these keys are like the alphabets in creating music how then do we compose music before we answer this question let us see if we can say anything about the structure of a tune or the melody itself if we listen to any musical piece such as janagana mana or rup te ramasthana we notice that their second lines and subsequent lines are not just mindless imitations or repetitions of the first lines there is an elaboration of a theme as the song unfolds you could listen to any line of rup te ramasthana and feel that it's connected to the first line in a musical sense if someone played a musical phrase from the song at random the odds are that you will guess it is from rup te ramasthana and it might sound trivial you may also notice that rup te ramasthana does not sound at all like janagana mana there is a the national anthem there is a character a structure and an identity to the song however vague the concept may sound if you have grasped the abstract concepts you may you have almost understood the concept of a raga or ragam or rag because a ragam is an embodiment of a particular musical identity for example if you heard the song vande mataram shujalam sufalam you can tell that it has its own identity which is very different from the way janaganamana or rup te ramasthana sound this song is in fact based upon a ragam called desh how do we forge such musical identities using a keyboard the answer lies in just choosing a subset of keys out of the 12 keys available in the octave instead of all the 12 and sticking just to the subset of keys while making music and using the uh, permissible gamakams or the microtones <coughs> for that for that set of notes if you use all the keys in the keyboard to compose one song you may not create anything with an identity you will see that uh, as you understand more about music that this uh, statement is strictly not true there are nice sounding musical compositions where almost all keys are used <coughs> let us take an example let's choose just all the white keys in an octave that is use only 7 out of the 12 keys and let's play the keys in any order even stay on one key for whatever length of time we choose to do let us allow now ourselves to go to the white keys in the octaves below and about the second standard octave as well after a few minutes you might sense in effect a wholeness gestalt or a personality to the sound if you don't believe me have your friend keep play the keyboard with only the white keys now close your eyes and ask him or her to occasionally hit any black key you can easily tell whenever the black keys are hit because you are now sensitive to the quote structure or character produced by the seven white keys is there a lower limit on how few keys we can choose in our subset and still get by to produce a raga if we choose a subset of just three keys say the first two, three white keys in an octave and limit ourselves to those keys we will see that we don't have much variety to the melodies we can produce it may sound like drum beating but it's deso- devoid of any specific m- melodic personality in general know that there's not an absolute law one chooses five or six or seven keys out of the 12 keys to available in the octave to make the raga more about the selection rules later once these keys are selected the corresponding keys in other octaves are also automatically selected and used in the melody making process in the context of indian carnatic music one has an extra degree of freedom one can choose one set of keys to go up in frequency called the arohanam and choose an entirely different set of keys to come down the octave called avarohanam as you mentioned the key sequence to go up is called the arohanam and the key sequence to, which forms the descending order is called the avarohanam more about it as well later now let's to stick to the symmetric choices while going up and down that is the arohana is the same set of notes as the avarohana at the risk of sounding repetitive let's say that you always decide to be non conformist and follow none of the so called rules and conventions music is after all a creative art and a final criterion is whether it sounds pleasing how do we select this quote subset on quote of keys our ancestors have done quite a bit of research on such selection rules and have come up with algorithms for you computer scientists out there let's look at the western music first the major scale 
is a very typical selection algorithm. This helps you select seven keys in an octave. The rules are as follows. First key, choose any key in the octave. Second key, skip the adjacent key to the right, choose the one after that. In effect, you have moved a whole tone from the first key. Remember the concept of whole tones and semitones from the first part? And that whole tone equals shifting two semitones. The third key, again skip the adjacent key to the right and choose the second one. Again you moved a whole tone. Fourth key, select the adjacent key. You have moved a half tone or a semitone. Fifth key, skip the next key, next key but uh, select the one after that. Once again you moved a full tone or a whole tone. Sixth key, a whole tone. Seventh key, the half tone or semitone. In short, your frequency selection is select a key and then move by the following intervals whole tone, whole tone, half tone, whole tone, whole tone, whole tone and half tone. If you started with the usual key, C key, the first white key you will see that uh, the C major scale is simply all the white keys. This is a very major scale really with a lot of popular compositions and in the process of introducing this algorithm we have also defined the term scale which is simply a sequence of keys. Also the algorithm wraps around itself that is if you started out with the F key for example and you and created an F major scale you will spill over to the next octave but that is okay because you can fill up the rest of your scale by starting out with an F key of the previous octave that is with this algorithm you will always select seven keys in an octave the question to ask is will we get unique sequences using these algorithms every time we every time we start off with a new key or is there a possibility for our sequence repeating itself for two different starting keys that is is the C major scale different from D major scale and are there 12 unique major scales I leave this exercise to an enthusiastic reader so let's first take an example played by Harihar of the major scale Coming back to the main description. Similarly other algorithms can also be defined. One other choice is called the minor scale which is in reality a generic name for three different algorithms. One of them goes as follows whole tone, half tone, whole tone, whole tone, half tone, whole tone and whole tone with the freedom to choose the first key. Okay, If, this, if your mind is racing to figure out what this is we will look at an example of it in music pretty soon. I'm not giving the selection 
rules for the other two minor algorithms again there are 12 keys and we can select as our first key and therefore we can generate 12 sequences of per minor algorithm and there are three such minor algorithms bringing a grand total of 12 times 3 or 36 possible minor scales but we discover that many of these scales repeat themselves and in reality the number of unique scales or unique ragas are fewer than the 36 minor plus 12 major scales okay so let's take a look at uh, the minor scale come back to the main discussion mm. coming back to the Indian system <coughs> even the ancient Tamil literary work Selapadikaram talks of an algorithm called Ilikramam fascinating as it sounds the rules of Ilikramam are quite similar to the selection of major and minor scales it's really fun to work out this algorithm and derive a bunch of scales if you're interested in this refer to professor Ramanathan's book in the reference section in fact, nothing stops you at this point to go ahead and create your own selection rules and choose 7 keys out of 12 in the octave. Let's let turn our attention to Carnatic music. Also at this point, I will depart from talking about Indian classical music in general and stick only to South Indian music. Wherever relevant, refer references will be made to the Hindustani music. In Carnatic music, a very famous algorithm exists to select the keys in an octave which form the basis of important scales which are called the Melakarta scheme. The Melakarta scheme selection algorithm is as follows. You can refer to figure 3 or table 2 in the main text if you like. But I'll illustrate this also in music. Rule 1. Always select the first white key, that is Sa. Always select the Pa key, that is the fifth. This is a convenient midpoint of the octave, sort of. Rule 3. Select one of the Madhimam keys, Ma1 or Ma2. Notice that one of them is a black key and another is a white key in the keyboard. Once selected, this key is your Madhimam or Ma. Rule 4. Select any two of the four keys in the lower tetrachord or Purvangam from keys 2, 3, 4 and 5. Once selected, the first of these two keys will be your Re and the second will be your Ga. Rule 5. Select any two keys out of the four keys in the upper tetrachord from keys 9 to 12. Once selected, the first of these two keys will be your Dha and the second will be your Ni. This rule is exactly like rule 4. Once all the seven keys are chosen, you have your complete Sarigama Padani. Let's see how many Melakartas or scales we can build in this way. By rule 4, you can choose two keys out of four in six different ways by going, going by the element, elementary combination theory. Similarly, going by rule 5, we can choose two keys out of four in six different ways. By rule 6, you can choose uh, one key out of two in two different ways. So we get 6 times 6 times 2 or 72 Melakarta or Melakarta Ragams. <coughs> so these, uh, this Ragam, the scheme was uh, formed by an old Indian scholar called Venkatamaki that sets out the 72 base of Sampurna or full-fledged Ragams in Carnatic music out of which all other Ragams are derived because they are subsets of these. And these 72 ragams are all unique and they have an interesting naming system we shall see later. By definition, the Melakartha ragams are symmetric with respect, to go with respect to going up and down in a scale. Saying the same thing more technically, in Melakartha ragams, the Arohana and Avarohana are simply reversed. The sequence Sarigama Padani is Arohanam and the reversed sequence Sanidapa Magari is Avarohanam. The Melakartha ragams are also called Sampurna ragams or complete ragams. Interestingly, even the Melakartha selection algorithm allows us to choose all seven white keys, same as the western C major scale. 
in carnatic music we call the resulting melakatha ragam as shankarabharanam and uh, that was what uh, uh, we looked at earlier when we looked at the major scale you may have also heard of this ragam or the movie called shankarabharanam uh, in hindustani music the set of all white keys is called the bilawal thaat one of the major building blocks of the hindustani musical system let's go back to table 2 and see why notation 1 makes sense for example you can pick any two keys from the keys 2 3 4 5 and still call the first one of those as re and the second one is ga and if you choose the keys 2 and 5 then you will sing out re when you strike uh, when you strike key 2 and ga when you strike key 5 and on the other hand if you choose keys 3 and 4 you will say re for key 3 and ga for key 4 and so on the rule is the first key to be used among these four keys is a re and the second one is called a ga no matter which absolute position the keys are located uh, keys 3 and 4 have the dubious honor of being a re or ga depending upon the situation and this particular sit, uh, setup is known as the shat shruti um, or the shodasha swarasthanam schemes uh, these arguments are valid in the upper tetrachord in the choice of the and ni as well now perhaps we can understand why three keys were designated as re ga or da or ni there is uh, uh, one of these uh, these three keys are usually an alias for another rishabham in terms of absolute frequencies a caveat i'm using the word ragam in a loose sense here a ragam is not just a scale or a bunch of keys it is much more than that remember i have told you over and over and over again that microtones are everything in indian classical music that is gamakas and a key keys in a digital in a keyboard are simply digitized approximations so we shall take an example to illustrate this the seven white keys are not enough to give the resulting music the flavor of the ragam shankara varanam it is those seven keys plus all the associated microtones which constitute the shankara varanam scale okay so let's take a look at how the shankara varanam plays out Ga 
So that was the ragam shankarabaranam <coughs> so we saw how the microtones or gamakams added a lot of flavor to the ragam so even though we added the microtones uh, what we showed was just the structure of the arohana and arohana with the microtones um, when we use the word ragam or ragam alapana we mean that uh, we we refer to the shape that is projected by the artist of the ragam or the aesthetics of this of the ragam that is projected by the artist so this is much more abstract than uh, than what i showed but what uh, we showed in the arohana arohana with the microtones forms a basis for that abstraction okay so we move on in fact you may hear shades of shankaravarnam when somebody plays the western c major or the hindustani bilawal but the shades are different for the c major and the bilawal and the shankaravarnam the c major does not have any gamakam Bilawal has some gamakam but the usage of the gamakams um and the conventions are are fairly different and uh, it's a uh, uh, the uh, one simple uh, oversimplification that can be made for carnatic music is that you see much more shorter phrases and more rapid change in terms of the pace of the gamakams and uh, sung as phrases um, which are set to sahityam or um, what are called alapana sangatis or swarakalpana sangatis versus in hindustani it's uh, it's much more uh, meandering and um, uh, they try to find all the color for a single gamakam before proceeding to other gamakams okay so this is a, a very high level distinction it is important to listen to some music to figure out if you can really identify an artist go through these gamakams a simple rolling of the tongue subtle jumps and modulation or vibrat- vibratos are all indications of varieties of gamakas also if you are the type that questions authority you may equally well question the melakrta selection rules why should we always include pa and why can't we include both the ma1 and ma2 keys in the same scale in hindustani music there are ragams that which use both the ma ske ma keys and though it is a general no no in uh, the mainstream of carnatic music once you become uh, more advanced you'll see that in carnatic music has also adapted some pieces with which uses both the ma's especially ragas like sindhu bhairavi finally we should notice a fundamental difference between the western system of scale building compared to the melakarta system or the 72 raga system in the western classical music you you started off on a specific key use the algorithm to generate the next key which in turn let you to the third key of the scale and so forth you sequentially generated the keys one after the other just by shifting a whole tone or half tone by a curious coincidence even the um ilikramam algorithm in silapadikaram is a similar mode shifting or a tone shifting algorithm by contrast the melakarta scheme is a brutally mathematical scheme where you selected seven keys out of a possible 12 keys subject to certain constraints here you figured out the frequency relationship between the keys much later one important consequence in the western scale system the keys in a scale are not more than a whole tone apart that is any major or minor scale you skip at the maximum just one key whereas in the melakarta scheme you can choose key 1 key 2 key 3 key 4 7 key 8 key 11 key 12 by the algorithm this corresponds to ragam ragupriya notice the big gap between key 3 and key 7 between ga and ma where we skipped over three keys this uh, this uh, amounts to skipping two whole tones or four semitones we also skipped um, 
two keys between pa and da the keys uh, 8 and 11 such large intervals can produce unpleasant listening experience and usually these intervals are called vivadi or uh, vivadi notes okay and they should be used with care even though ragupriya like ragam is legitimate ragam um mm. um just to give you one example of a vivadi ragam um not the mela karta but a derived one called nate it is very beautiful ragam but it has two notes which are very close to each other and uh, two notes which are farther from each other hmm sa ri ga ma pa da ni sa sa ni pa ma ri sa so you notice that the rishabham sa ri that ri is very far from sa and the way it, the gamaka mo sa sa ri ja ga ri ja ri ga ri ga ri and ri and ga are very close to each other ri ga ri ga ri ga ri okay ri ga ma ga ma was also close so these kinds of uh, close ri ga sa ri are called vivadi usages and they should be used carefully some of them are aesthetic some of them can be quite unaesthetic and uh, and it has to be sung with care because it's easily to uh, go wrong because they tend to confuse the intuition and there are very beautiful songs in such ragas like sarasi ruhasan priye amba swaminath paripalaya suma ninne bhajan these are all ra- songs in that ragam you can see the color of the ragam being projected in those songs some more discussion on the melakarta ragams a scholar named venkata makin invented the melakarta scheme way back in the 17th century he was the first to comprehensively classify raga in a periodic table like arrangement a complete list of the 72 melakarta ragams is given in table 4 which i'll not go through in great detail when venkata makin a uh, devised a table only a few of the 72 ragams were known using his schematization venkata makin not only cataloged the existing melakarta ragams but also filled in the gaps by coming up with, uh, with the key sequence for the rest of the melakarta ragams thus the scheme helped discover new melakarta ragams which in turn led to even new derivative or child uh, ragams from using those or what are known as janya ragams composers and performers perform, performers lapped it up and made songs in the new hitherto unknown ragams uh, table 4 the ragam 29 is a friendly ragam shankaravarnam though its uh, less well known official name dhira shankaravarnam is used in the table because it corresponds to uh, a fancy scheme for being able to figure out the number of the melakarta ragam dhira from uh, from the name itself the first uh, two aksharas of the name and vice versa <coughs> this brings out yet another aspect of uh, the melakarta scheme the names of the ragam are not ab- arbitrary the names contain mnemonics which spell out which keys are used in the ragam from the name dhira shankaravarna which figure out we can figure out it's actually all white keys by converting it into the number and using the number to figure out what the um, uh, uh, raga swarasthanas are venkata makin was lucky that most of the 72 ragams were not known so that he could assign names to them or add a prefix to the existing ones imagine if all the ragas were were to exist first and then you try to group them you might not have such a mnemonic scheme possible in fact in hindustani music such schemes were not invented and we now have hundreds of ragams which were tough to classify using such simple mnemonics of course the absence of such a comprehensive scheme is by no means a negative or a deficiency in the system in music like most things in life we sh- don't and should not want to make value judgments let me now explain to you the mnemonic of the katapayadi scheme thanks to r pichumani for notes in this section so the katapayadi katapayadi scheme essentially assigns numbers to syllables um for example ka is assigned the number 0 and kha is assigned the number 1 ga is assigned the number 2 and gha is 3 and so on and uh, this sort of repeats uh, uh, as the basic um uh, <coughs> aksharas or syllables of uh, the hindi or sanskrit language 
um, come around so for example the dhita the way it comes is uh, the word ra the ra okay so corresponds to ya ra la va so that ya ra is number 2 and dha is uh, number 9 tha tha dha 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 na okay so number 9 is tha tha dha dha so dhi ra is uh, refers to the 9 and number 2s so if you replace if you turn around or reverse that scheme it's called it will become 29 so dha stands for 9 ra, ra stands for 2 that is 92 if you reverse 92 you get 29 Okay so this is the uh, funny way in which you get the scheme so assign the numbers so the scheme is as follows assign the numbers to the first two syllables of the melakartha ragam for example hari kambodi the syllable ha is 8 and ra is 2 thus hari is 82 the melakartha num- uh, of number of this ragam is obtained by simply interchanging the digits 82 becomes 28 and in fact hari kambodi is the hari kamboji is the 28th melakartha ragam and we saw the same example for dhira shankarabarnam you can see that shankarabarnam probably existed before the scheme was invented and thus the author had to alias it to conform as conform to his lookup table scheme there are such other aliased ragams the popular ragam thodi is aliased or expanded to become hanuman thodi and kalyani is become mecha kalyani so that you can apply the katapayadi katapayadi scheme naming scheme another example is the ragam maya malava gola it used to be called malava gola uh, and uh, it has been renamed to maya ma is 5 ya is 1 yielding 51 which inverted gives 15 and so on what are the advantages of such mathematical and more almost hackers type of, type of scheme one the melakartha scheme does not tell you if a given ragam is a melakartha or not if you know it is a melakartha ragam you can find out what its number is Uh, for example you can see what uh, uh, number is the ragam pantuvarali which is called kamavardini uh, or you can see what is the number for ragam purvikalyani it should be 21 if you look at pa and ra and so on uh, but it's not even a melakartha ragam so you cannot use the above look up algorithm so you have to first know whether the ragam is a melakartha ragam incidentally if you look up the table 4 which lists all the melakartha ragams you will see that the very two famous ragams shankarabarnam called dhira shankarabarnam and kalyani called mechar kalyani have identical notes except for ma shankarabarnam has the shuddha madhyamam ma whereas kalyani has prati madhyamam ma sari sari ga ma sari ga ma that is the difference thus the table is different divided into two groups of 36 ragams each and the only difference between the ragam on the left and the ragam on the right is the ma ki used the first 36 from kanakangi to chalanatai are called the shuddha madhyama ragams and the other 36 called are called the prati madhyama ragams or ma two ragams melakathas which differ from each by 36 such as harikambudi and vachaspati kiravani and simhendra madhyamam etc have the same arohanam and avarohanam except for the madhyamam but however the shape or the form is very very different how do we figure out if the arohanam and avarohanam or the keys to use from uh, the name of the melakath ragam if somebody tells you kiravani you can quickly locate the keys on a keyboard corresponding to the ragam can you you just have to look up table 4 to see how this how cyclical the whole thing is all melakartha ragams in the same group of 6 that is 1 to 6 7 to 12 35 to 30 25 to 30 have the same sarigama all ragams which differ uh, from each other by 6 have the same padanisa karahara priya harikambodi himavati Na- nasika bhushni have the same padanisa because have they have they all leave a remainder of 4 when divided by 6 so just to summarize all melakartha ragams from 1 to 36 you ma- use ma1 those from 37 to 72 use prati madhyamam or ma2 the riga assignment is as follows ri1 ga1 melakartha is for melakartha 1 to 6 and 37 to 42 and ri ri1 ga2 melakartha is from 7 through 12 43 to 48 and so on and so forth and dhani assignment is as follows take the melakartha nagam and divide it by 6 and look at the remainder if ni1 dha1 ni1 if the remainder is 1 dha1 ni2 if the remainder is 2 and so on so if you had a spinning you can just look up the table and uh, figure it out okay 
these are all for people who want to keep it ever, all in your mind and figure out all the raga and so on <coughs> so you have all so all you have to do is take a melakat ragam from its name determine its number using the katapayadi scheme from the number figure out the arohana arohana simple enough okay this again just gives the basic scale but not the mood or the uh, form of the ragam in greater detail than that let's move on again among the 72 such major ragams not all of them are equally popular some of them are quite obscure especially the ones whose keys are not spread apart well through the octave however many musicians have composed in all uh, 72 melakartha ragas kotishwara iyer for one musicians like um, ms subalakshmi and s balachandar have recorded all 72 melakartha schemes ragas so you can um, buy a cd of theirs the shuddha madhyamam Uh, Shuddha Madhyamam is just the official name for Ma 1. Group of 36 Ragams are by and large more popular than the Prati Madhyamam. Prati Madhyamam is the same as Ma 2 group. <coughs> Ma 2 is supposed to be more negative and sad. The more unpopular Ragams are, like, are the ones like Kanakangi which use closely spaced keys. The Raga Maya Mala Gula on the other hand has well spaced out keys. Sa, Re 1 space. ga to ma one space pa dha one space ni to sa sa ri ga ma pa dha ni sa sa ni dha pa ma ga ri sa if this sounds familiar this is just the sarli swaram or the ragam all beginners are taught essentially because such a dispersed set of notes is more easy for a beginner to learn from these complete ragams you can derive child ragams omitting a he- key here and there in the arohanam or avarohanam some melakartas are parents of a large number of popular child or janya or derived ragams melakartas like nathabhairavi karaharapriya harikambodhi shankaravarnam for example we will see this in the next section You may wonder how just one key makes a such a huge difference. I told you that the ragams Kalyani and Shankaravarnam have identical arohana and avarohana except for the key used to produce the ma syllables. You have to listen to your keyboard. Play Kalyani and Shankaravarnam on the keyboard even though you don't produce the microtones and even though you're playing an equi- equally tempered instruments. You can tell the two apart. Sa ri sa ri sa ri ga ma pa da ni sa ni da ba ma ga ri sa ri ga ma pa da ni sa ni da ba ma ga ri sa now if you look at a song these are very very different शिव कामेश्वरी चिंतये हम शिव कामेश्वरी सो द मा इज इधर यूज डायरेक्टली और अल्यूडेड टू इन द होल रागम सो देयर इज नो डाउट दैट दिस इज कल्याणी देयर इज इफ यू डू शंकरावरणम स्वर राग सुधार सयुत भक्ति स्वर राग सो द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द राग इज सच दैट इवन दो यू डायरेक्टली डोंट डू द मध्यम अर्ली ऑन सरी गाग व्हाट इज देयर इन दैट sari ga ma is very out of place so it alludes to a smaller madhyamam coming later therefore therefore it uh, shows the ragam shankara varanam apart from kalyani just by the way the notes have been chosen and that is the art in uh, in creating compositions so that the bhava or the form of the ragam comes out very clearly even though the distinguishing notes may not be played directly <coughs> okay so the the madhyamam keep makes a big difference both directly and indirectly in the way the usage has have come so uh, one has to simply listen to music to train one's ears and it will become obvious and people in concerts um you can see them getting excited because they have uh, figured out the ragams before others have uh, while the artist is doing it 
Since Melakarthas have the maximum allowed 7 notes in a ragam, they have an enormous scope for melody making, compared to a derived ragam which may have less than 7 notes. Uh, this is just a general rule, but there are several derived Melakarthas, derived Janvai ragams which are considered to be of larger scope than the uh, original Melakartha ragam itself. Like for example, Natai is sung much more often than Chala Natai, which is the original Melakartha ragam. Thus, these ragams are very popular in concerts and uh, uh, especially some of the main big Melakartha ragams such as Kalyani, Shankarabhadnam, Thodi, Karaharapriya are chosen for the heavy part of the concert and uh, where they try to exhibit their mastery. So what is a ragam? Now that you have studied the Melakartha scheme inside, let's go to the to generate the secondary or Janya or derived ragams, the rest of the ragams that is, based upon some simple guidelines. These are only guidelines and not hard and fast rules. Again, aesthetics drives uh, what is truly hard and fast. 1. A ragam should have at least 5 keys in an octave and at most 7 keys in the arohanam as well as the, as well as the avarohanam. 2. The arohanam or ascending order of notes or avarohanam or descending order for that matter is obtained by simply taking a melakarta scheme and omitting none or one or two notes. Remember that the Melakartha scheme has 7 notes, so we can end up with 7 or 6 or 5 notes in the derived scale. For example, let us again take the Ragam Shankarabharanam. If you obtain, if you omit the notes Ma and Ni, we can only use the 5 white keys Sari, Gama, Sari, Ga, Pa, Da, Sa. Then we get a famous Ragam called Mohanam. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at this Ragam Mohanam and see how it goes. This is the Arohana Arohana of the Ragam Mohanam, first done flat and with illustration on piano by Harihar. So here we have taken the Ragam Shankaravarnam and have omitted the Madhyamam Ma and the Nishadam Ni. Sariga no ma pa da no nishadam sa. Now, this is a five note scale and it is called an outer varaga and it has the same symmetry in the reverse direction. Sa da pa ga ri sa. illustrate how we add gamakas or microtones to it and how we can approximate it to the piano. You observe that this is the same gamaka as used in Shankarabharnam because it has the same pivot note saga and oscillates between the gari, hiriya, gari, gari. And notice that gamaka has more weight at the gandharam, gari, gari. It stays longer at ga. So it's like a notch, oscillation with notches coming down. Pa, da, pa, sa, da, sa, da. So you see that these are discrete ways of approximating the end points of it. Sa, sa, ri, ri, ga, pa, da, sa, sa, da, sa, sa, da, sa, da, sa, da, sa, da. Pa, pa is flat. G, 
that was ragam mohanam and the hindustani equivalent of this ragam is called bhup or bhupali usually the the next octave sa is also included for the completion hence the arohanam will be correctly called sariga pada sa similarly the avlo- avrohanam is called sada pagari sa you will notice that almost all ragam start with the key sa from now on we will omit saying re1 or re2 if there's no ambiguity for which key we are using especially if we say which uh, ragam it was derived from if we use the um the pattern sa ri ga pa ni sa sa ni pa ga ri sa we will get the ragam hamsa dhvani so let's look at an illustration of the ragam hamsa dhvani we now look at the ragam hamsa dhvani which is another derivative of shankara varnam but instead of the dehivatam as in mohanam it uses the nishadam as its choice and it's also an audava audava raga symmetric five notes in each direction sa
it only catches the end points and uh, the music contains more microtones than the end points so what we saw was the ragam hamsa dhvani um <coughs> just to remind you there are very famous songs in this ragam such as vatha pe ganapatam वातापि गणपति भजे हम वातापि गणपति भजे हम वातापि गणपति भजे हम सो सॉन्ग्स लाइक दिस आर द क्लासेस फॉर व्हिच आर अवेलेबल ऑन द म्यूजिक आर्काइव वेबसाइट which you can find by going to google <coughs> and typing carnatic music archive or carnatic music class anyway we move on if we used sari ma pa da sa we get the ragam shuddha saveri i don't have a piano illustration for this so let, let me just sing it mm, sari ma pa da sa sa dha pa ma ri sa the gamakam version is sari ma pa da sa sa da pa ma ri sa there are very nice uh, songs in this kal haran mel ra re so there you saw usage of the anuswaram re re gare 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 sa 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 da da pa pa ma re sa there you put the sahityam kal haran mel ra re sita raman kal dari ni telu sukhoti त्रिपुर सुंदरी धारिणी त्रिपुर सुंदरी ओके दीज आर ऑल साहित्यम एस्थेटिक्स बट दैट वॉज दी रागम शुद्ध सावेरी विच इज अ ब्यूटिफुल रागम एज जस एज दस इट्स ईक्वल इन टू दी रागम दुर्गा इन हिंदुस्तानी सो दीज आर uh janya ragams which are derived so just because they are derived and have the similar gamaka structure doesn't mean they have a form which of which is very unique to themselves so the mohanam form is very different from the form of shankarabaranam uh, so you don't uh, get a sub form out of shankarabaranam because it has a completely different form even though technically um the one ragam is derived from the other so that's very important to understand the concept of um, a raga or a raga alapana if you have a keyboard try to play these keys since you can get a feel for the identities of these ragams for example in mohanam jump from ga to pa for that matter da to aparsa is quite characteristic besides carnatic and hindustani music a lot of oriental tunes are based on the ragam mohanam and you see this used quite often in the indian light music as well third the five note scale such as mohanam is called a pentatonic ragam the indian equivalent name is called audava ragam which was mentioned in the commentary on the when we the practical commentary similarly the six note ragam is called the sh, uh, shadva raga or sext sextatonic scale in vex, western terminology and the seven note ragam is called septatonic or sampurna or full raga while the ragam mohanam is pentatonic with an implicit assumption that arohanam avarohanam are reverses or of each other other asymmetric possibilities are allowed a ragam can have five notes on the way in arohanam and seven in the way down for example you can have a ragam which is exactly mohanam in terms of arohanam sariga padasa but it's kalyani in the way down and uh, it turns out that this audava sampurna ragam is called mohana kalyani similarly you can have other varieties such as audava 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 sampurna sampurna shadava shadva raga etc melakart ragams are of course sampurna sampurna that is full both full and sequenced both in the arohana and avarohana um, as we mentioned the arohana avarohana need not be the reverse of the arohana for example you can have a ragam that goes sa ri 1 ma 1 dha 1 ni 2 sa and sa ni 2 ni 1 dha 2 pa ma to ga to sa avarohana okay these are all just a random choice a lot of ragams are however symmetric 
and usually they offer a lot of scope uh, but the uh, s- songs which are asymmetric also offer a lot of scope and there are also other special types of ragams called bashang ragams which we shall look at in a moment once you have chosen the keys you are restricted only to play the keys so the key point in a ragam is that the scale um, bounds what the ragam technically should be and uh, it also implies a certain form and that is the form which people try to bring out in when they try to when they're um, doing a concert uh, so the restriction to play these keys is not uh, you should not think of it as a restriction to elaboration of the form there is an infinite variety in the form itself especially some ragams are said to have a lot of scope like mohanam kahamsudvani etc and uh, people can do lot uh, ragalapna which can go f- forever with that uh, some other ragams instead of going up or going down simply can go around, go up or down in a zigzag manner such, such as uh sa ri won ma won ga tu pa ni tu da won sa etc uh, you cannot simply go up and scale just by merely pressing the keys one should spiral to the top of the scale there are not too many such ragams but there are um uh, and such meandering structures is called vakram which literally means crooked there's an additional constraint in posing the ragams uh, besides the key selection there are a lot of beautiful vakra ragams and tyagaraja has said to have composed several vakra ragams to give you an example of a vakra ragam Mm, there's a ragam called Begada. Sagar, Sagar, Rigama, Vada, Vasa, Sagar, Rigama, Sagar, Rigama, Vada, Vasa. It makes sense to sing Begada only with Gamakams. It is actually quite weird if you sing it with, uh, without Gamakams. Gamasa. ತದರಿ ಸಗರಿ ಗಮ ಭ ತಪಸ ಯು ಸಿ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಶೇಕ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಕ್ರುಕೆಡ್ ಬೋತ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಆರೋಹಣ ಸಗರಿ ಗ ಮಾಪ ದಪ ದಪಸ ಓಕೆ ಸನಿ ಸನಿ ದಪ ಮಾಗರಿ ಸ as a interesting usage of gamakam there five in some other instances it may not be easy to uniquely define the arohanam or avarohanam of ragam many arohanams and avarohanams there is definitions can exist for one ragam itself one such example of a ragam is ananda bhairavi there are another example is sindhu bhairavi and um, of course those arohanams and avarohanams will be close to each other there will be some um, changes in the arohanam or avarohanam and these uh, notes uh, which are not normally used are sometimes called bhashanga notes or anyaswaras and the whole ragam is called a bhashanga ragam okay so let me give you an example of ananda bhairavi now
touch all the microtones in between. Pa pa da pa 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 da pa. So you can't be approximated easily. Sa sa ni sa sa ni da ni sa da ni da ni da ni da ni da ni sa da ni da ni da ni da ni da ni sa da ni da ni da ni sa ni sa sa ni da ni da ni da ni. Okay, it starts at sa sa ni sa ni. Da pa da pa ma ma pa ma pa ga ri ma ga ma ri ma ga ma ri sa ri ga ga ri ga ri sa ga ri ga ga ri ga ri sa a ri sa za even though the sa normally doesn't have the ma come it comes as now you look at the whole guarantee of the ga ra ga sa ri sa ga ri ga ma pa da pa sa sa ni da pa ma ga ri sa now the ragam also contains odd notes other than these canonical notes da 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 that is the small devatam Bada ba ma ga ri ga ma bada ba sa ni da ba ma ga ri ta da ra na na da ri na ri bada ba. That's an odd note. And now it also has the antar gandharam sa ga. as da da ri ma ma ga ga ma ga ma and it also has the higher ni ni sa ni sa ta ri na 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 ri So that was Anand Bhairavi. As you saw, <coughs> it had um, a lot of varieties besides the basic Arunha Arunha, which itself was crooked, and it has uh, different um, microtonal possibilities. But these ragams are very beautiful. They have uh, many beautiful songs. Just to give an illustration. Gati yu varo ma marire So that's an example of a song in Anand Bhairavi another song ಸಲ್ಲಕನನ್ನು ಬ್ರೋಣಿ ಮದಿಸಲ್ಲಕನನ್ನು ಬ್ರೋಣಿ ಮದಿಸಲ್ಲಕ ನನ್ನು ಬ್ರೋಣಿ ಮಂ ಮ ಬ್ರೋಣಿ So Semangudi Srinivas Iyer for example is a great exponent of this raga Manand Bhairavi mm. and finally there is a confusing possibility there can be two ragams which have different or identical i'm sorry identical arohana arohanas but different microtonal associations or gamakas that is permissible gamakas the only way to tell these two ragams apart is to sensitize your ears to the differences in the gamakas okay 
you can go ahead and create your own ragam by selecting your own five keys or six or seven and following the above rules and name it after yourself but make sure it doesn't already exist um balamurli krishna one of the great exponents of music from andhra pradesh uh, he was he was very adept at uh, designing new ragams and uh, even several of the modern composers lalgudi jayaraman balamurli krishna have made compositions in several of the ragams which did not have many compositions including specialized compositions such as thillanas and uh, and even dance ballet pieces however if you created your own pentatonic pentatonic ragam you, pr- you probably did not choose the first five keys of the octave you might have distributed the five keys such that they were spread out in the octave instead of being bunched together so that your ragam sounded better in fact such subjective aesthetic criteria have resulted in only a few ragams being popular so aesthetics is quite a dominant force uh, in um, in music as it should be mathematically there are many many ragams possible choosing 5 6 or 7 keys or of uh, possible 12 keys gives a, to a large number of combinations and also you add the vakra and bahashanga possibilities they are quite huge but uh, fortunately many of these possibilities have been deemed boring to the ear by musicians throughout history and only about 6000 or so ragams have been catalogued of, of these only a 200 or 300 are used <coughs> commonly but from time to time um, some talented especially senior artists um, bring out new ragams and for example ravi kiran is said to have composed uh, several uh, tens or hundreds of uh, songs in um, uh, quite obscure ragams uh, a ragam's popularity can go up or down depending upon people's taste the existing political climate of carnatic music caucus and uh, and uh, depending upon the artist who chooses to bring out its a- aesthetics and discovers and brings out aesthetics Uh, so that um, lesser artists can actually pick up and follow it and develop on that basis so the uh, area of raga alapana etc or uh, manodharma music as it's called is uh, continuously evolving <coughs> where we build upon the discoveries of prior artists so music is indeed a discovery process it is always possible to break down any song even the non carnatic songs uh, especially the melodies into its constituent swaras and define uh, corresponding ragas in fact Uh, this is how um, a violinist typically accompanies an artist um, who is singing an unfamiliar ragam or an unfamiliar uh, song uh, you have to figure it out on the spot and both the ragam and its gamakas and its aesthetics and be able to play it even baba black sheep can be broken into a ragam musicians are more clever than we uh, we are and have done things such as created ragams out of truly dravidian folk melodies such as adu pambe or kavadi chindu songs like nandavanthil nandavanathil or andi and created ragams such as anand bhairavi and kurunji sometimes sometimes the ragam corresponds to ra- songs like baba black sheep may not have an enormous scope to create a lot of characteristic phrases and aesthetics thus limiting the aesthetic possibilities or the creation of more songs in this ragam and so a general uh um, rule of thumb is if a ragam has many many compositions it usually means that these compositions are at least somewhat different from each other which uh, rep- uh, which uh, explores different aesthetic scopes of the ra- of this ragam and ragams like thodi karahar priya kalyani kambodi um shankaravarnam have lots of compositions by revi uh, and so this uh, suggests that there is a lot of scope in this ragam and a good way to understand the scope is just to pick up the songs themselves In general if two songs sounds strikingly similar the odds are that they are based on similar set of notes and thus in the same ragams the basic ragam is typically identified by pattern recognition if you're not willing to do detailed uh, decomposition into uh, the constituent cu- uh, keys of the scale in fact this is what is known as bhava based the recognition of raga uh, which uh, uh, which many folks in concerts are quite adept at especially if they have listened a lot when this is often known as kelvi gnanam or kelvi means just by hearing you can figure out the ragams even though you might not know the underlying details and the theoretical structures the basis of ragams is one the use of restrictive number of keys in an octave two to go on up and down an octave in a prescribed manner and yes three throw in appropriate microtones uh but more than all this uh, uh these uh, even this basic things imply certain melody melodious personalities um which needs to be discovered and that is what is called the raga swarupa of the ragam the term micro uh, as a, as usual the term microtones or gamakas 
presents a major difficulty in understanding the totality of the concept of a ragam so it is much more than just uh, the notes itself or much more than just the gamakas for the notes itself because the combinations or phrases of such notes uh, give certain personality to the ragam and especially when sung in uh, certain contexts etc how exactly can one specify which microtones are involved what is the best way to notate the millions of intermediate frequencies instead of getting very analytical about microtones carnatic music just gets away by omitting a precise definition of a ragam in some sense arohanam arohanam this descending descending sequence is only an operational definition or a skeleton a bare bones skeleton at best and forms a basis uh, where an artist can take off since the associated microtones or gamakams cannot be defined numerically it has become fashionable to say that ragam is a mood a feeling or emotion even if you can relate to such unmusical terms another way to define a ragam is by analogy or how it should sound like and compare it with a historical standard or primitives um it is uh, always much easier to sing the gamakas associated with the ragams produce the basic patterns rather than let furrier analyze it A ragam is uh, alternatively defined in terms of its characteristic musical phrases these characteristic phrases are called pakads in hindustani music or sangatis in carnatic music literally meaning catch phrases these all lend to a certain amount of mystery to the concept of ragams even though musicologists have strived to uh, lay down the characteristics of a ragam in something known as raga lakshanas or raga characteristics like blind men trying to figure out an elephant we are supposed to know only a part of the personality of the ragam swarupa never its wholeness we can only know so many characteristic phrases of a ragam not a complete set of them even if there exists such a complete set one song may have 20 of them another may uh, another song the same ragam might just use 10 of them but 10 newer ones musicians are always trying to create newer newer characteristic phrases to bring out newer and newer aspects of the ragam one might uh, have thought that they would have composed every possible phrase in the ragam shankara varnam but people are still making new melodies in the old ragams we will perhaps never run out of tunes in this ragam an easiest way to identify a ragam then is by analogy and trying to figure out if there is a recurring characteristic phrase uh, that is trying to put a structure a mental pattern structure to the abstract and this in fact is one of the uh, important educational values of learning the art form of music figuring out a ragam has always been a natural thing for a carnatic music enthusiast especially if the ragam happens to be an obscure one it's almost like solving a crime some of the ragams can be so distinctive that you can recognize them only when as one two or three notes are played thanks to the characteristic microtones for example ga that is anand bhairavi gari gam pada upama gari ga okay sometimes life is not quite simple our definitions of the term ragam may be violated some talented musicians might introduce occasionally into a, a well defined ragam for nice musical effect uh, new notes such a process is called mishrafying uh, you can have a ragam shivaranjani played pure this is called the this is a pentatonic ragam or you can have a mishra shivaranjani where you occasionally introduce a sixth or seventh note not prescribed in the definition of the ragam no this this requires quite uh, a degree of aesthetic expertise if you or i play shivaranjani and try to mesh up it it may go so far from the original ragam that we might sound horrible resulting in besur or apaswaram equally incredible we can have other violations as well ragams like sindhu bhairavi and kapi are played with so many more notes than traditional maximum of 7 on the low side people have laid claims to ragams with just four notes let your ears be the judge play something class play some classical sounding music and see if any particular ragam thrills you anything that turns you off completely play instrumental or light classical music at first before embarking on a heavy duty vocal piece because sometimes the vocal um vocalists use certain um characteristics as the the ran you might not be uh you, you might be quite turned off by the word tadara and things like that which apparently sound meaningless but essentially the music the musician is thinking about the abstract ah and instead of make playing the boring ah he is doing tadara so it might be a little while before you can get used to that but in vocal music you can uh, look at sahityam or you can hear the sahityam and if you are uh, um, able to understand the meanings of the sahityam and uh, associated with the music that gives us a separate kind of enjoyment as well 
Is there a piece that moves you, puts you in a sublime mood, helps you drive a car, goes well in the background when you cook? The reasons for asking this question is to figure a little more, little bit more about psychoacoustics. While I do not believe that a particular ragam could be inherently an angry ragam or a midnight ragam or bring the rains or tame an elephant, ragams could very well produce individual psychoacoustic effects. This is the end of part 2.